one year ago, I, me and the others, uh, Antonio and Khaled, we, we had no idea of making a film, you know, it just happened like this. Uh, one day, I mean, the, the idea came to us before the, <laughs> before the project of the film. We were in the train station of Milano, uh, we were just drinking a coffee, me and Khaled, and uh, we're sitting on a bar and the guy came to us and asked uh, us if we knew from which platform the train to, to Sweden was leaving for. And, uh, you know, it was uh, such a strange question because from Italy there is no train to Sweden. Uh, it's, it's too far from Italy. There's no train. There's only airplane. So it was uh, like a very naive question. So we asked him something about him. We discovered that he was a Palestinian guy who was just arrived by boat on Lampedusa Island. And so, you know, we start making questions and... Uh, like that, like that day, a friendship, you know, started with him, and at the end, he became the the groom in the film, uh, Abdallah. So, like this, I mean, two after two weeks of this, uh, from this coffee, from this meeting, we decided we have to do something. Uh, we could have brought him to Sweden directly, and we made a film about it. That's how it how it, uh, it came to be a film. Okay. We, until now, we we are still free. I mean, we don't have any process against us, but yes, we, we are still risking to be brought in front of, of the of the court and to be judged. Uh, what uh, should I tell you? I mean, it's 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 uh, th this film is not only a film; it's, it's a film and a political uh, act at the same time. You know, it is an act of uh, civil disobedience. I mean, we were uh, aware of the risk we were taking when we decided to bring these five people to Sweden, and uh, we decided to do it. I mean. Not not just as a, as, a, as a film project, but also as a political act of civil disobedience. Uh, I don't know how much do you know in Canada about what is happening in the Mediterranean Sea, but here in the last uh, 20 years, uh, at least uh, 20, 25,000 people have died just trying to cross the Mediterranean Sea on the smuggling roads. You know, from 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 North Africa to to Italy or Greece and Spain, it's more or less the same that is happening on the Mexican border with the U.S. You know, with thousands of people dying on the smuggling uh, routes. So we decided to disobey to these migration European migration laws. Why? Because we think they can be changed, and changing that laws we can save. Uh, thousands of lives, you know, of people who are dying just to, to cross to cross over from one side to to the other. Also, we decided to do it because uh, we all, I mean, uh, we all knew something about uh, the war in Syria. Me, personally, uh, as a journalist, before then as a director, I went in Syria several times, uh, been covering the Syrian war uh, as a as a correspondent, as a journalist, for uh, I mean, I've been there at least five times in the last two years. So we all saw the war, and we decided we had to do something for the Syrian people uh, arriving in Italy. You know, at least 50,000 Syrians arrived by boat illegally in the last two years, just to rescue their lives. So yes, we know it's illegal, but we also we also think that. Uh, you know, laws can be changed. I mean, uh, not just because uh, something is legal, uh, it is uh, fair. You know, sometimes you have to change uh, the laws. So we, we decided to, to make this act. We found the support of uh, 3,000 people who not only crowdfunded the film, but also supported our uh, act of disobedience. And uh, I think that now the reason why we have not yet been arrested in Italy is because uh, 100,000 people uh, went to the cinema and, and saw the, 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 the movie in, the, in, in Italy. And, you know, so now it became... Uh, a strong uh, story. So if they are going to arrest us, it's going to be a big publicity for the film. I don't think they're going to do it.
Well, thank you for the question. Well, I think, yes, the, the, the only alternative that I see um, is uh, it's, uh, freedom of movement, uh, is the li visa liberalization, you know, which actually it's already part of the European policies, because if you look, uh, you know, Europe is quite uh, schizophrenic, uh, uh, in a certain way, because uh, they, they are investing uh, everything on the freedom of movement, but only with certain parts of the world. For example, if you look at the immigration policy in Europe, the, the big majority of immigrants in Europe, they, they are coming from uh, Eastern Europe, Romania, Bulgaria, Poland, and also from the Balkans, you know, Albania and, and, and all the Balkans. And then and, and they are traveling uh, currently on a regime of uh, free visa, freedom of movement, you know, so the, everybody from Albania or Romania, they can just buy a flight on internet and come to Paris or Berlin or Spain, so it's free for them. So I don't understand why they are, uh, they have been experimenting, you know, this kind of freedom of movement with Eastern Europe for almost five or six years, and they don't want absolutely to open uh, uh, the freedom of movement uh, toward uh, Arab countries and African countries. Uh, these are the countries from which people are uh, taking the boats, you know, and heading to the smugglers and taking the sea to, to Italy or Greece. So if the, the only solution is to put these people on the legal framework, you know. It's, the, the point is not how to stop migration, because migration is not passing through Lampedusa, through the, the smuggling routes, you know. Migration is coming from Europe, from Eastern Europe. So, you know, it's a different story, migration. We are talking about uh, 100, 200,000 people who every year decided to cross the sea in this way uh, because they have no alternative. They, 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 they are not able to get visa, you know. So I think this, the solution is to make more simple to get visa or even to liberalize visa and to make people travel by airplane with a visa without uh, you know without uh, dead people on on, on our uh, seas because because really every year we we have thousands of people dying in the sea as a result of these uh, of these policies so especially when you especially looking at Syria you know Syria it's our neighbor country. It's not uh, for you. Is a is a is a is a, is a far country, but for us, it's, it's a neighbor country. The, we are Italy is a Mediterranean country. Syria is our neighbor. So our neighbor, there is a war. Uh, almost three hundred thousand people who died in the war. We are not even able to to make them simple to to travel and to reach a safer place in Europe. It's a shame. Last year, almost uh, one, 170,000 people arrived by boat in Italy, and uh, almost the 70% of them, they went away from Italy and applied for asylum in other European countries, especially in Germany, Sweden, uh, Denmark, Norway, the Northern Europe. Why they don't want Italy? Because uh, of the crisis. In this moment, uh, it's very difficult to find a job in Italy. Uh, so even if you are, up, uh, you are you are seeking for asylum, okay, but you have to think what you are going to do next. I mean, after you you you, you get the asylum. So people now they are they are you know they are pla they are preferring to apply for asylum in Northern Europe, where the the economy is still uh, going quite well. So where they can expect to find a, a job and better condition of life. Uh, from Syria, you, you, last year we got some 50,000 uh, uh, Syrian refugees uh, landing on it, the Italian uh, shores, and all of them, all of them, 100%, they went out of Italy and, and they went to Sweden or Germany like that. Now, why uh, Manar and his father were uh, sent back? Because of their fingerprints. So they, they were among uh, amongst the, the, the very few Syrians and Palestinians uh, who were fingerprinted in Italy. And you know, there is a um, European 
regulation, which is called uh, Dublin uh, 3, uh, which uh, impose you to, to, to apply for asylum in, in, in the first country where uh, you are uh, fingerprinted. So, which is supposed to be the first country where you arrive. But you know, now Italy is playing a little bit with that because uh, our government in this moment uh, they're not so interested with refugees, so they prefer to let them go, and that's why they're not taking the, the fingerprints uh, to them. To most of them, I told you, 75 percent that they just went out of Italy without being fingerprinted. But yeah, Manar, they, they, they were not lucky. I mean, actually, you know, not both of them were fingerprinted. Only the father. So that's why they decided to go to Sweden. I mean, they. they Manar, he was not fingerprinted, so they had like 50% of possibility, but Sweden decided to be quite strict and send them back to Italy. And well, anyway, now in Italy they got the asylum, so I mean, it's not a problem of uh, being recognized or not, it's a problem of, uh, of, of job. What are you going to do after you get the asylum? I was just saying that even Manar in in the songs is is rapping about coming back, you know, about uh, the return to Syria or to Palestine. So it's not only Tazdin, not only the bride who say this. And uh, yeah, of course we have to think about it. And uh, yeah, concerning the the movie screenings in the Arab uh, countries, we showed it uh, in once in um, Dubai the Dubai International Film Festival. Then we have, we have also been in Jordan, in Amman. There is a festival which is called the Karama Film Festival. And this screening was very interesting because in Jordan, the majority of the, of, of, of the spectators in, in, in the theater, uh, they were Palestinians and Syrians. So we had a screening like in front of maybe six, seven hundred people, and the majority they were Syrian and Palestinian refugees. So it was very moving, also for us. You know, I mean, you can imagine. For example, all the songs of the film they, they knew it, so they were singing. You know, on 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 the film during the screening, it was very moving. And of course, now we took some contacts uh, in these two festivals, Dubai and and uh, and Amman, in order to organize is a screening in, the, in Palestine, of course, and uh, well, in Syria at this moment it's very difficult because of the war, as you can imagine, but uh, we want to screen the film in, you know, in the main cities of the neighboring countries, like uh, Beirut in Lebanon or uh, Istanbul uh, in Turkey, uh, because in these cities there, there is a, there, there are living, you know, hundreds of thousands of Syrians. So we want to to show them this uh, film, and yeah, so we're going to do it. Yes, well, uh, pff, mm, it is very relative, you know me. Well, I think I think in this moment Sweden I think uh, they they have a uh, uh, good uh, job opportunities from one side and from the other side they have a uh, good welfare state you know this uh, Sweden is very well known for that they have a welfare state uh, not, not not just for refugees I mean also for Swedish uh, people in generally speaking so I think it's more easy you know the first step I mean uh, how to, 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 to find a house a job and start again your life at the end I don't know I mean because uh, all the Syrian friends I know who are living in Sweden they're not so happy but because you know they are Mediterranean so they are missing maybe a certain kind of social life you know that uh, life is different let's say like this in Sweden um, uh, it's not better or, or worse it's different simply so for example I know some Syrian friends who are living in Italy for example they don't have a job but uh, they, they find uh, very easy the kind of life because you know we are still a Mediterranean country so it's more easy for them to to integrate in the society you know so it's very relative I I, I, I cannot really answer to to your question I think yeah yeah it's true there's no this this uh, 
I mean, we, we choose to climb the, the mountain uh, not for security reasons, mm -hmm. sincerely. I mean, there was no risk. We could have done it by cars. Uh, but, uh, you know, as uh, from an artistic point of view, you know, we decided okay. we have to... To, to make the mountain, uh, not only to have some different uh, images, you know, not to have, uh, we didn't want to have a film, uh, all the movie inside uh, the cars, you know, it's that been a little bit claustrophobic, you know. And at the same time, we wanted to make the the old track of the Italians, you know. In Italian, this is called the Passo della Morte, yeah. uh, Pass of Death, of the Death. Because in the past, uh, I mean, uh, until the 60s, I think, uh, uh, hundreds of Italians died uh, trying to, to climb that mountain. There is, there is a, a, a part of the mountain which is very difficult to, to climb. We, we, we did the simple... Uh, the simple uh, path, the simple way. But in the past, at the time of the French uh, custom, you know, in order to avoid the control, they were doing a very difficult uh, track. And so hundreds of Italians died on that way. So it was a way for us also to remind, to remember to the people, you know, remind people how uh, this story was our story, you know, in, on, on that mountain, for example, during the Second World War, uh, thousands of uh, anti-fascists, uh, you know, went in France, uh, thousands of Jewish people also, you know, saved their life, uh, not to, to, to be caught by the, uh, and deported to the Nazi in Germany, and, and, and thousands of simple workers, you know, unemployed workers who were looking for a job in France, they did their way. So it was a way for us to remember, you know, our story, and uh, yeah. That's, that's, that's the point. And also it was very funny to see the, the, the bride, you know, on, on the, in the middle of, uh, of uh, all the trees like this. It's a good image to see. Okay.